Hey guys, Tim from DynastyProsFootball.com, and we're starting a new series every Wednesday for the NFL Weekly Rundown. This is brought to you from Let's Talk Sports and DynastyProsFootball.com. So let's just talk about it. As we begin the new series, I'd appreciate any likes and follows. Also, likes and follows for Let's Talk Sports and Dynasty Pros Football. Now, let's get down to it. First, let's go over some injuries. Some are pretty heartbreaking. Some are hopefully not so bad. First, let's talk about Jonathan Taylor. He's questionable. There's a chance he may even play this week. I mean, I'd have a backup plan just in case because it's a Thursday game, but it looks like he'll play. Move on to Denver. Javante Williams, really heartbreaking. He's supposed to have a breakout, and he, uh, he's torn up his knee, and he's going to be gone all year. Uh, I'll tell you, Melvin Gordon's probably gone. He's probably taken already, but he's got four fumbles already. So that backfield's in trouble. I mean, Mike Boone is the next guy up. So if you get him, it's, he's worth a gamble. Giants, they're struggling right now at QB. They lost Daniel Jones. Uh, it doesn't look too serious. I wouldn't even touch that team if I'm being honest. So if you're out of Daniel Jones, you might have to try and make a trade happen. More quarterback news. The Patriots, they lost Mac Jones last game. Uh, it seems like he's going to be out for at least a couple. Uh, again, that's another team that I, I probably wouldn't take his back up. Uh, it's pretty murky, so you might make a trade there too. Bigger QB news. Uh, Dolphins, Tua Tungavailoa. He had that 6-6 six, six TD game. It was a little rough the next game. And then uh, those concussions. And, and you know what? It may be sick that they put him back out there last week at all. McDaniels. Come on, man. You could see he was wobbly. You put him in anyways. Oi. Oi, 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 oi. So it's rough. Uh, there's no timetable. It doesn't seem like he's going to be out very long. But, I mean, tread, tread with caution. Falcons. Former wide receiver, now running back, Cordell Patterson. He's uh, he's out for at least four weeks. I mean, if you guys know me, I already told you you got to pick up Tyler Algier before this. He was already getting carries, and now he's going to be carrying the backfield. So if he's still out there magically, uh, hey, now's the time. If he's not, you might have to look elsewhere. Tennessee, Traylon Burks. This one's a little heartbreaking to me because he was my guy heading into this year. Uh, all those rookies, I was most excited for him. He's gotten off to a slow start, but now with the turf toe, I mean, he'll be sitting next week for sure. Hard to tell how long he'll be out for, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's too bad for that young guy. Other rookie wide receiver, Jahan Dotson from Washington. This dude is on fire more than uh, most of us ever thought he'd be this quick. He's questionable with a hamstring. Uh, my guess is he'll probably be out next week, maybe the week after. You never know. I'm not a doctor. But uh, this is a big blow to that team. Big blow to your fantasy squad, too. Uh, Curtis Sable for sure gone, but, I mean, if he's available, you go. In Dallas, Noah Brown has been a pleasant surprise. He's played very well as that number two. He's questionable with a neck issue. Uh, it wasn't great for him to begin with because Michael Gallup came back and he already scored in his first game back, so... Noah Brown, he might be going on the back burner anyways, but regardless, uh, the injury makes him questionable. Lastly, let's talk about Cincinnati. T. Higgins, he's questionable with an uh, ankle injury. Uh, I even doubt he'll miss next week, but uh, he's been lights out. All the Jamar Chase fans, myself included, uh, basically thought T. Higgins was the, the second option, but I'll tell you, I'd almost rather have T. Higgins right now than Jamar Chase. Uh, so this is a pretty big blow to your team, especially those who got him at a discount because uh, Chase took all the all the glory for a lot of editors. Let's talk about some regression, shall we? Uh, some guys who didn't do so well this week. Chase Edmonds, I mean, I've been preaching to avoid this guy. Uh, I mean, not necessarily talent, but the backfield. So crowded to begin with. And, uh, and it's been rough. Last week he had uh, five rushing attempts for a total of six yards. Not enough for starting running back, that's for sure. He's averaging only two receptions and uh, seven yards per game at, at receiving. He was supposed to shine there. So it's a red flag for sure. I mean, you're not going to get much for him, but I'd almost try to get something at this point. James Robinson, what a revelation he's been, but uh, not so last game. He went 8 for 29 with zero touchdowns, and uh, ETN came along and split the, the time. So those who thought ETN was going to walk in and take this backfield, they're looking pretty good after last week. Uh, Robinson's not dead yet. He's still got value. 
Uh, he's not going to be, you know, your, your top starter or anything, but he's definitely still viable as a flex. Antonio Gibson, a lot of people shipped that guy off before the season had even began because of Brian Robinson. He had a pretty bad game, and thus far this season, he, he hasn't gone on for 50 rushing yards in the last three games. So it's uh, it's not great to say the least. I, I still have more faith in him than most. So, uh, I mean, don't don't burn the farm down yet. Uh, he's still got plenty of value. The Rams, let me tell you, it's uh, it's been a different year than last year. Uh, Cam Akers is breaking a lot of hearts. Week one, uh, he did literally nothing. Next week, fans got a little more excited. Week four, it was rough once again. Uh, he, he had eight rushes for 13 yards, no touchdowns. He didn't even have a single target. So uh, Cam Akers... Even if he pulls it out next week, I can't trust him. I'm trying to get what I can for this guy. Daryl Henderson, uh, he'll probably be available for fairly cheap. I would rather have him in this option, honestly. He's not as much of a talent. Uh, he's not going to go off like Cam Akers can, but uh, I, I can't start Cam Akers and trust it. So I'm, I'm letting him go for whatever I can get at this point. Let's talk about Miami. Uh, Jalen Waddell, uh, the kid is so talented, but there's only so much to go around. We all had to know Tyreek Hill was going to snatch up a lot of those targets. Uh, you can't really fully trust either one in, in each game. Right now, <laughs> Tyreek Hill is the more consistent one. Uh, Jalen Waddell, he only caught two balls for uh, 39 yards, no touchdowns this week. Now, granted, Tua went down, so that's not, I mean, you got to take that with what you can, but He's only had one game with more than four receptions. He had that whopper where it was a monster game. But other than that, it's four receptions or less. Uh, I'm holding on to Jalen Waddle. Obviously, he's not leaving my team. But if anything, I'm making a trade for this guy because the people are panicked. I mean, you could get him for such a good discount right now. So, I mean, I'm making a deal for him more than ever now. Deontay Johnson, this one breaks my heart a bit. This is this is my guy. PPR, uh, he's a machine. He hasn't had a good quarterback play for pretty much his whole career. Trubisky hasn't done him justice, and uh, Kenny Pickett came in, and it, it didn't really improve him very much. Uh, this last week, he had two receptions for 11 yards, no touchdowns. Uh, a lot of my team suffered for Deontay Johnson, honestly. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, it's like Jalen Waddle. I'm making a move for him more now than ever. People are probably ready to th throw that guy off the ship. Uh, he's going to come through for you. So uh, get him on your squad now more than ever. Quarterbacks, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, he started the year off like a new man. Uh, I got him in a few leagues. Super thrilled with what he's done. Last game, however, uh, <laughs> it looked like last year all over again. Five turnovers. Now, Take him with a grain of salt because he's played against Philly, and Philly's been unbelievable. So this doesn't bring him down by value at all. Uh, if I get Trevor Lawrence now, I'm, I'm thrilled. So, uh, yeah, be patient. Uh, it's only one game. Like, he's, st he's still gold. Get, get, like, don't make a mistake there. Carson Wentz is making fans panic. He's looking like the end of Philly days. Uh, he's looking like the last few weeks of the year last year. He's got uh, exactly one touchdown in the last two weeks. But uh, let's not forget the first two weeks he had seven. Uh, he's also not turned over the ball like he does sometimes. So I'm not running out to make a move for Carson Wentz. But I am definitely holding on to if he's on my team. I can't panic yet. So I mean, don't, don't worry too much about Carson Wentz. Lastly, uh, we got to talk about Matthew Stafford. Uh, it is uh, tremendously frustrating when you have Arguably the best receiver in the league. Uh, you have one of the best, off at, one of the best the whole teams overall, actually. And uh, he has not been getting it done. Uh, he's got uh, four touchdowns in four games and six interceptions. Like, that's insane. That's insane when you consider what he's got. Now's the time uh, to hold on to him. You can't sell him now. You're not going to get anything unless you got you know somebody in Superflex who only had Trubisky or something. Uh, you got to hold on to him. But if it's possible to get a lot for him. Like, I, I'm jumping for joy at this point. Uh, it's super frustrating, but you're probably forced to hold on for now. Let's talk about some bounce backs, shall we? Uh, Rashad Penny had a, a, a dandy game last week. Uh, 17 attempts, 152 yards, two touchdowns on the ground. He's never going to be a guy who catches the ball. 
So uh, PPR, I mean, he's no more valuable. He's less valuable, in fact. And he's always going to have these games where he's just unbelievable. Listen, we all knew this would happen. Up and down, up and down. Last week was insane. But who knows next week? I, I mean, now's the time. You sell Rashad Penny. Uh, I don't think there's much of a threat, if I'm being honest, uh, from, from Kenneth, the backup rookie. But uh, it's not sustainable. You can't bank on it. You got you to gotta trade him out. The next one is near and dear to me, obviously. You can see uh, I might be one of the biggest Austin Eckler believers on the planet. Uh, that game made my heart sing, man. He, 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 and he's a big fantasy guy. You guys should know that by now. I'm sure, I'm sure, I mean, he's obviously thinking about the real game, but in the back of his mind, he's probably thinking about guys like me. Uh, three touchdowns, uh, two on the ground, uh, one in the air. He's catching balls like he has been all year, but he was actually very effective on the ground. He's looking like himself, and that whole team is way different when he sings. Uh, Obviously, managers are going to jack the price on him now. Uh, but if you acquired him last week like I did, uh, you're looking pretty smart. And you're having a good day, let me tell you that. Brees Hall. Guys had him also in their top five in dynasty ranks before he even played a game. It looked terrible to begin the year. Michael Carter just wouldn't go away. Not only that, he was the starter. Uh, personally, for me, I didn't predict Brees Hall would be that valuable at all this year. After this year, he's, he's insanely valuable. But, I mean, I'm pleasantly surprised that uh, last week uh, he definitely took over that backfield. 17 attempts, 66 yards, and one touchdown on the ground, and even on six targets. Uh, the, guy, the guy's a stud. He's going to be way too, way too much in Dynasty. But it's possible in redraft he might even be sitting on the wire still. Uh, if he's there, spend your old fab on this guy. Get him on your team. And in Dynasty, if for some miracle reason you could get him at a decent price, like that, that's my priority if it's at all possible. But, I mean, we're probably dreaming at that point. <laughs> Josh Jacobs, my boy, finally came through for me. Very nice. Uh, I mean, he's still pretty, pretty good this season overall. Uh, definitely not... What I hoped he would be, but I mean, you if you were zero RB when you drafted, you probably picked this guy up for way, way cheaper than he's worth. This week, 28, 28 attempts, 144 yards, two touchdowns on the field, and uh, the rest of the running backs combined only got two rushing attempts. Uh, th there's more to come here. This is just the beginning. Don't be mistaken. Uh, Josh Jacobs is a beast. Uh, while so much attention goes to Devontae Adams, uh, he's ready to go. That offensive line is way better than they get credit for. They're still not at the top of the league, but certainly enough. And, and he's so underrated in PPR. Uh, he's been a top top 12 back the last few seasons. So uh, he's probably going to cost too much now after that game. But if, he, if you can, that's a no-brainer to me. Brandon Cooks had a nice bounce back against the Chargers. I mean, obviously I'm a little biased. But uh, that secondary is no joke. And he caught all seven of seven targets. And he had a touchdown. Uh, that was a terrible game for Houston in the first half. But they turned it up like they have all year in the second half. If they could start stronger, they'd do really well. But uh, they start too late every game, unfortunately. But, yeah, Brandon Cooks, he had himself a nice game. It was It was very nice for him and all the managers who have him. I hasten to say I'd be tempted to go and make a deal for him, but uh, the price has to be right. All the Bears fans can breathe somewhat of a sigh of relief. Uh, Darnell Booty, uh, people finally found him. He was on milk cartons. Uh, there's people, you know, doing manhunts for this guy, and he finally appeared, got himself 94 yards. Uh, hilariously, that was over half of Justin Fields' total passing yards to the entire team. Uh if I'm a Chicago fan or a Justin Fields manager, I'm insanely worried. Uh, I, but at least there's a silver lining to this. Darnell Moody finally woke up. I mean, I still don't think he's trusting. You can't trust him right now. You can't. You can't even trust any Bears. Even my boy Cole Komet, who I sing praises for, uh, you can't trust any of them right now. It's, but if I could make a trade for him, he, he, he'll never go this cheap, especially in Dynasty. I mean, you don't start him yet. That's for sure.
my boy, Big Mike, Mike Williams, he had a heck of a game. Now, granted, it was against Houston. But it was still really good to see him catching so many balls. He didn't score a touchdown, but, I mean, seven seven catches for 120, that, that makes anyone smile. He only had one catch, one catch in six yards in week three. So nice to see him activated. Uh, the team needs him. They they need him to run uh, and, and catch in order for success. So that was just nice. Uh, I I don't know if I'd make a deal for Mike Williams unless the price is right. If the price is right, that's a no-brainer, obviously. Uh, I got a feeling if anyone's going to let him go, they'll demand, uh, they'll demand your head. So... Do with that what you will. Uh, back to the Jets again. Corey Davis, he had he had a heck of a bounce back. Five catches, 74 yards, a touchdown. Super great. I mean, he went two catches, 27 yards the week before. Super nice to see that if you if you got lucky enough to get Corey Davis essentially for free early on. Uh, I'll tell you, I am worried for Elijah Moore uh, managers. Uh, he's There's only so much to go around in that offense. Uh, I mean, Zach Wilson coming back is a real nice upgrade from Flacco, but I mean, Zach Wilson, he's he's had his struggles too. So I'm not running out for Corey Davis. If he's free in your league, which he may be, uh, that's a great pickup. Uh, if I'm an Elijah Moore manager, I'm very worried, uh, especially with Garrett Wilson doing what he does. But anyways, as far as Corey Davis, that was nice. He bounced back nice. Lastly, let's talk about TJ Hawkinson from the Lions. Uh, let me tell you, I, I got so many shares of Hawkinson. Thrilled at his performance. Listen to this. You remember it? Eight catches, 179 yards and two touchdowns. Unbelievable. Uh, I will say this. As much as I love him, I, this is a sell now moment. He, I mean, he only had, uh, he had only broken 40 yards, uh, uh, how many times uh, before week four? Zero. He had yet to break 40 yards, and he got 179 last game. Uh, so if you could sell him, now's the time. I still believe in him, obviously, but I, I can't turn down the profit you'll get if you try and sell him. Especially in tight end premium. You're not getting any better than that, like. So if you can, you sell him. You sell him and, and you cry a little bit into your cereal, but it's got to be done. Let's talk about some uh, waiver wire, some pickups, some trades maybe you should make. Uh, I started off hot with Derrick Henry, the king. Uh, coming off that major injury, and uh, at his age, a lot of people were pretty worried about the king. Uh it's not like the team is the most firepower team in the league. Uh, but I'll tell you, these last two games, uh, 42 attempts, 199 yards, two touchdowns. He scored it all but one. Uh, but the, the best part about it is that the last two games, he's had 11 targets. He's caught eight of them for 91 yards. And for all those of us, myself included, who thought he was useless in PPR, compared to others because you can't catch the ball. Uh, it's a pleasant surprise. Uh, they've been forcing the ball in the air more, so he's he's more valuable than ever. So if you're lucky enough to get Derrick Henry, took a shot on him if you weren't one of those naysayers, let me tell you, uh, you're looking real smart to the rest of your, uh, your league mates, that's for sure. I have to mention Miles Sanders again. I can't, I can't fathom, I can't fathom what he's doing. I almost want to say he's on uh, on performance enhancers because it's a different guy than last year. Different guy altogether. I, I tried to get Kenneth Gable everywhere. I thought he was going to take over this backfield. I mean, I am the first to admit I was completely wrong. Miles Sanders is unbelievable this year, especially compared to last year. 27 for 134 and two touchdowns against a pretty good team. Now, it's important to know he had... 15 for only 46 yards the week before. I will say this, though. I was thrilled for the success of that whole team, to be honest. Uh, but I can't hold on to Sanders anymore. I have to trust the fall off is coming. He's a startable running back in this league, but he's not that. He does, he's, You can't count on that every week. I'm forced to let him go. I'm forced to, to make a nice profit. Uh, if you have him, you have to do the same. So hopefully you'll get a nice haul for him. If you're going to hold on to him, I mean, more than welcome, but I think it's a mistake at this point. <sighs> PSA for Jonathan Taylor. 
Before the year started, I told you all who read my articles, who see me on TikTok, who anyone who talks to me, I said, you got to sell this guy. You're, you're going to get a king's ransom. People are going to pay out the nose. I was in leagues when people were trading away three first round picks and a starting running back. The thing about running backs in this league, especially the guys who lead the league in, in fantasy points every year, it's very hard to duplicate. Teams know they have to latch on to that guy. Last week was pretty frustrating. Uh, 20 attempts, only 42 yards, even lost a fumble. I mean, you're stuck with him now. He's cost too much to do anything else with. I will say this, though. He's a slow starter. Every year, his first four weeks, two of them are terrible. And uh, last week against Tennessee where he kind of flopped. In his history with that team, he only has one game with more than 8.2 PPR points. So some guys just have that team that's their kryptonite. Might be Tennessee. Uh, regardless, at this point, if you have a panicky manager who's like, I got I to gotta unload Taylor, I can't take it anymore. That's one of the biggest vulture moves you could make. Uh I'd still pay out the nose for Taylor because you know it's going to turn around. The guy's so young. He's the team's focus. So <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to be crazy enough to let him go. But if they are, I mean, even a redraft, that, now's the time to, to come to them and say, listen, I'll take him off your hands. I'll, I'll take care of it. Don't you worry about Jonathan Taylor. Here's a pile of other things that will help your team now and make that deal. Make the deal. See what they say. I kind of imagine a Dwight trying to – buy the car off of Andy in the office kind of situation. But uh, yeah, if you get Jonathan Taylor now, now's the time. If you have him, don't let him go. Like, don't be mistaken. I got to talk about Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Uh, I've been a Hilaire truther for a long time. Uh, this offseason was tough. I, I almost gave up on him. Uh, he's been he's been great. Uh, I mean, he's not the best. Obviously, the consistency in yards, especially on the ground, has not been the best. Uh, he's split in time uh, with Pacheco and even with McKinnon. It can be frustrating, but those TDs keep coming. They keep coming. He's got five so far. He's going through the air. He's rushing. He's been great. He's such a good zero RB guy this year. He's probably way too much, but at this point, I'm almost going to overpay for Clyde Edwards and Lair. If you have him and you, and you want to make a profit, I mean, it's a great time. He's showing people, hey, listen, I was a former first-round pick. There's a reason they took me so high. So I want him. I don't know if I could pay for it, but, uh, yeah, he's a nice, nice, nice uh, pickup if you could get him. Let's take some time to talk about Allen Robinson. Uh, this is exactly what I predicted for the guy. Uh, I loved him, loved him in Jacksonville. Came over to Chicago uh, before last year. Uh, still really good. Still very valuable. Uh, last year happened. He was actually a keeper in one of my leagues. Uh, broke my heart tremendously. And I thought to myself, you know what? Now he's going to LA. Uh, obviously, this is an insane upgrade in virtually every capacity. But I thought, I just, I can't trust it. I got to see it first. Uh, so I'm, I'm so thankful I avoided him. I feel terrible for people who don't. There's just, it's always going to be Cooper Cup. Always. Stafford has his guy. At this point, you sell them for you sell them for a bag of balls. Like you got you got to get what you can because if he goes off one game and you miss it, like it kind of sucks. But he's chances are he's a starter for you. He's he's in your flex probably, and you can't trust that. You can't. So get that off your plate. Get it, get it out of your life. Save the stress. Someone else's problem. One of my favorite targets this year was David and Joku. Uh, and all but one game, that game, that week one, I kind of looked like an idiot, I'll be honest. But since then, I look so good. I look I look so smart. Uh, so many people thought Jacoby Brissett was a big step down for Baker. Doesn't seem that way. Joku has basically taken over that, that second receiver role. Uh, he's one of those guys that seems like he's been in the league forever. Uh, he got drafted so young, and he's a first-round pick. Let's not forget that. So this should not be that surprising. But uh, they gave him that fat contract. They got to use him, and, and I'll bet they're happy they are. Like, they should have been using him all along. He's a fantastic talent. I was glad to have him in so many leagues. I picked him up so early in other ones that I didn't. 
Uh, if he's still out there, that this is one where you spend a lot of your fab on, especially in a tight end premium. If he's the tight end premium, he's probably gone. But if he is, right, that's money. That's money in the bank. Another tight end, Tyler Higby. Uh, he's been a nice surprise. He's doing what everyone thought Allen Robinson would do. Uh, he's he's looking like that number two target. He had ten catches. Ten catches. Uh, He's performing so well despite Stafford's inconsistency. And Cooper Cooper Cup is just uh, amazing. It's hard to shine for anyone else, but he's been doing it. Tyler Hugby, he's a very, very quiet move you could make. Get him as a throw-in with something else. Don't say to somebody, hey, listen, uh, what's your price on Tyler Higby? Because then they're going to say, oh, this guy wants Tyler Higby. I'm going to... What you do is you go for somebody else and you get him as a throw-in. You know that strategy. Higby's a great throw in this week. So try and give it if you can. I would do a disservice to anyone if I didn't talk about Kyle Pitts. What a disappointment. That being said, uh, you can't blame him completely. I think Mariota completed seven passes last game. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it's not all his fault. But that being said, that's the quarterback he's got. Listen, especially... In Dynasty. Redraft, I'm still on the fence. But especially in Dynasty, this is like Jonathan Taylor's situation. It's far worse for Pitts right now than Taylor, but you open the vault. He'll never be this cheap. I said that last week, and I was wrong. He's even cheaper now. Uh, you make a deal. You have to. You don't have a choice. It has to be done. So if you can get him, I mean, now's the time. Now's the time to do what you must to get Kyle Pitts on your squad. He's too much of a unicorn to stay this way forever. It's not It's not possible that he will be this bad for too much longer. It's going to come. You make a deal. Make a deal. Yeah. Pay what you need to. Get competence on your team. Lastly, i got to talk about Jared Goff a little bit. Uh, I've always been a Jared Goff believer, if I'm being honest with you. It was pretty rough go for a little while. Uh Last game, oh, he was lights out. This whole offense is very, very pleasantly surprising. Uh, I've been higher on him for the last couple of years than most. Uh, the unpleasant part about Jared Goff is he's very flippy flabby. Uh, last week was tremendous, but week three was was not good. Week two was unbelievable. Week one was meh. So he's kind of one of those guys that I like to have on my team as my third. If you're lucky enough, that's great. For a lot of people, he's probably their second. Uh, some situations with injuries and such, maybe he's your first option. Unless the matchup is stellar, I can't. I just can't trust him at this point. But uh, if you can get him on your team for a decent price, he's great to have in the wings just ready to go. Let's talk about now uh, some interesting situations, some interesting news maybe that could affect some teams. Uh, first, I've got to talk about Kenny Pickett. Uh, the Trubisky era seems to be just about done in Pittsburgh. He got pulled out last game. Uh, they were getting smacked around. Uh, Pickett comes in. First first pass is interception. I thought, oh, we're off to a bad start. Uh, I'll tell you, he brought that team uh, out from the basement into a lead. Now, ultimately, they lost the game, but he was an instant game changer for them. He got two scores on the ground. Uh, through the game, he still had three interceptions, and it says a lot about Trubisky. But let me tell you, Tomlin has never had a season under 500. And he's not about to start now. Uh, change was necessary. Pickett is a great quarterback. He's not going to be the best in the league, but uh, he's certainly more than Trubisky can offer at this point. So it should change a lot of things. I'm, I'm very interested to see how this affects all the key players in Pittsburgh. Uh, they won't have to stack the box as much against uh, Najee Harris because theoretically Pickett will throw the ball more. Deontay Johnson, he should be getting better targets now. George Pickett's already looked much better with uh, Kenny Pickett. Uh, Pat Fryermuth, he's another one that you're like, you know what, this is going to be an upgrade. So the people who invested in all those uh, Pittsburgh skilled players, uh, this is nothing but good. Situation in Carolina looks pretty dire. I'll be honest with you. Uh, the quarterback situation has it's pretty rough. Uh, Sam Darnold had a couple good games, and then he was Sam Darnold all over again. Brought Baker Baker Mayfield in, and I I was fooled. I was. I thought this is the year where DJ Moore gets more than four touchdowns. Uh, 
Christian McCaffrey has been Christian McCaffrey. That's probably not going to change unless he gets injured. Uh, but I'll tell you, it's it's dire. Baker Mayfield, this is this is his last chance, I think. Uh, and Darnold is coming back from injury, and there's a good chance that Darnold takes the team back. Uh, I'm very nervous if I'm a fan or uh, fantasy manager for any of these players, uh, even Christian McCaffrey, because teams will eventually just zone in on him. I have DJ Moore in a lot of leagues. It's uh, it's tremendously uh, terrible. <sighs> Matt Rule, uh, uh, he, he's got to be gone any game now if he can't pull out some wins. So those skill players you have in Carolina, you have two options. Number one, you stay put. But if you got DJ Moore, for example, uh, do not sell him. You can't because if change comes, you have to gamble that he'll get better. If you don't have the players, make a deal for DJ Moore. If you have the space, because uh, it can't get any worse than this. It can't. Uh, Matt Rule will not get fired without trying his best. A couple of rookies to talk about. Uh, Rashad White. Uh, get him on your squad if you can. Uh, Leonard Fournette has gone from 127 yards rushing in week one to 65, week two, to 35 in week three. And in week four, he had three attempts for minus three yards. Uh, not good enough. They they can't keep trying to go back to the well with Fournette and hoping they got what they did last year. They can't. Last year, he even split time with Ronald Jones, and that's why he did so well. So even if Rashad White doesn't take over this team, uh, definitely need to lend a hand, that's for sure. Uh, so if you get Rashad White cheap enough, that's a pretty good move right now. It's a good offense. Don't forget, it's a good offense. So I'd make a move for him if I could. Uh, Brian Robinson, virtually everyone knows he's medically cleared at this point. Uh, he's not taking over that backfield right away. Let's, let's, come on. I don't even think he'll take over the backfield this year, uh, but he'll definitely get some touches. There's two situations with Brian Robinson. If you could sell him for a lot, now's the time. If you could buy him for cheap, now's the time, but he's probably not affected for you. Uh, if you don't have him, you're probably not going to get him. Kate Otten, uh, that's a little quiet rookie time for you. Uh, Cam Brate, he's got concussion issues right now. Uh, he's played hurt as it was. Uh, Brady, traditionally, he loves his tight ends. Now it helps when you had uh, <laughs> insanely talented tight ends like he's had. But uh, I'm definitely willing to take a chance on Kate Otten. Uh, he's probably sitting on the wire for many, many, uh, many, many leagues. But uh, he's worth a pickup. He is, especially tight end is... The most talent starved uh, position in fantasy. So if you got a spot for him, I definitely get it. Let me end with some uh, predictions of mine, uh, just for fun. Chances are I'm probably off on a lot of them, but let's go over them anyways. Why not? So uh, India, Denver. Uh, India has been flippy floppy, but I picked them. Denver just looks terrible. Uh, something has got to shift that team at high expectations. But for right now, I take Indianapolis. Giants and the Packers, there's no way I'm betting on the Giants, let's be honest. Uh, Packers take that one easily. Bias alert, Chargers uh, are at Cleveland. I, I pick the Chargers, I have to. I'm biasly, I pick them anyways, but as a fan, I can't go against them. Detroit at New England, this is the game where Detroit makes someone look foolish, I believe. So they're losing games, really high-powered offense. But New England is just decimated. The defense is still solid, but the offense is non-existent, especially with Mac Jones out. Uh, I pick Detroit easily. Pittsburgh at Buffalo. No one should pit Pittsburgh here. I love Pittsburgh, but uh, it's not going to happen. Don't be, <laughs> don't be fooled. Miami at the Jets. This one is very tough, very tough. I'm tempted to say the Jets. I still think Miami takes it, but it's going to be pretty close, if I'm being honest. Atlanta at Tampa Bay. That's Tampa Bay. Uh, Seattle at New Orleans. That's one of the closest ones for me this week, if I'm being honest. I, I virtually, it's a coin flip for me. Uh, if I'm forced to pick, I'm taking the Saints, but I could see that one go either way. Tennessee at Washington. Uh, Tennessee, they, they played pretty well last game. Uh, I think it's starting to come together for them. Despite the injuries, uh, I take them to take this game. Chicago, Minnesota. Chicago, they're 2-2. Two and two. They should be 0-4. Uh, this is Minnesota's game. San Francisco, Carolina. It's San Francisco. Uh, they've looked way better than I predicted, and Carolina has looked as bad as anyone's predicted. Uh, Dallas uh, played the Rams in L.A., and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I picked Dallas to win. 
Uh, I would have never said that even two weeks ago. But uh, L.A. has just not looked themselves. Philly and Arizona, that's another one. I had high hopes for Arizona going into this year. And Philly, I thought, would be near 500. I was terribly wrong. I, I got to apologize to all the Philly fans. Uh, Philly should take that one easily. Cincinnati and Baltimore, this one's a pretty close one for me, if I'm being honest. But uh, I think Cincinnati takes it. The Raiders at the Chiefs, it should be no surprise that the Chiefs should take this one. I thought they'd take a step back after the loss of Tyreek Hill. Like a lot of people, they have looked insane. They've looked incredible. Uh, I don't see them losing this game to the Raiders. Lastly, I just want to thank everyone for watching. It means a lot to me that you take so much time out of your schedule. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, like and subscribe at Let's Talk Sports and uh, Dynasty Pros Football. Uh, come back every Wednesday. We're going to do this every Wednesday. It's so exciting. But uh, thanks again. Thanks for watching and uh, have yourself a good day.